Hi, I'm Janani and I'm one of your instructors for this course. I went to grad school at Stanford and after that joined Microsoft. Three years at Microsoft was enough for me and back in 2007 I joined Google and spent a full seven years there. I learned a whole lot. I worked in New York, Hyderabad and Singapore and just over a year ago I joined Flipkart. It was time for a change. It was time to experience technology in India. Hi, welcome to Breaking Away Coding Interviews. It's a well-known fact that coding interviews are hard. Why is that? I believe it's because software engineering and coding as a job is nothing like its interview process. Interviews are stressful and put you in the spotlight. However, there are some techniques you can use in order to make yourself ready to give a coding interview. The most important thing that you need to do is to practice and practice again. But let's see what are some of the other things that you need to think of and prepare for before going in for an interview. Welcome to the very first module of the course which will help you prep for programming interviews. Now this is a hard topic and it's hard to cover everything that you need to know for a fully fledged developer interview which is why we are going to do it in little bits. You can pick and choose the modules which work for you. Now, why are programming interviews so hard? Every software engineer knows, in fact, it's the bane of his existence that each time he has to switch or she has to switch to a new job, she has to do a fully fledged interview preparation, which probably doesn't have much to do with her daily job. This takes up a lot of time and is extremely difficult. We'll first look at why programming interviews are difficult and a step-by-step -step way in order to prep for programming interviews. It's important that this class is not about memorizing standard problems. It's about understanding how standard algorithms, pointers, standard solutions and other things work so you can apply to any problem that an interviewer might throw at you. There are infinite problems out there. You'll need to know how to approach a problem, not know the solution to every problem. With that in mind, let's plunge right in. Let's try and answer this question as to why programming interviews are difficult. The simple fact is that they are completely different from the everyday work that programmers do. The concepts are not different, the fundamentals are not different, but normally as day-to-day -day programming work, there is a lot of grunge work or repetitive work or things which you already know. For example, if you take a look at this meme on screen, this is a very standard feeling that software engineers get. You know something works, but you don't know how exactly it works. You know something doesn't work, but you're not sure why. Normal programming is 80% routine, things which you, jobs which you already know, and 20% innovative. Those are the cool things that programmers love to focus on. It's not just programming. Any job is 80% routine, repetitive, kind of work which you can do at spinal level. It's the 20% innovative bits. That's what programming interviews tend to focus on. Programming interviews focus only on the innovative bits. And keeping that up across four, five interviews for six, seven hours in a single day, that's really hard. There is another truth that all programmers know. It's totally possible to write inefficient and essentially bad programs in everyday life which get the task done, but don't get it done in the best way and still get by. While you're working in a job, it's the output that someone sees on screen. How good is your UI? Does it perform the job it's supposed to do? There's no one watching to see how well or badly you're coding. Are you using the most efficient algorithm? Have you laid it out so that it's maintainable by other members of your team? Have you documented your code well? Have you taken care of all the edge cases? You basically fix your code as and when you find issues, mostly in production. 
This is a fact. It's a pretty sta- sad state of affairs, but normally you just pick up what you know, maybe by looking at the internet, googling around for stuff, some things you know yourself, and you learn from your mistakes. However, during an interview, everything you say, every line you write, either on the whiteboard or you may be typing on a computer, is analyzed and critiqued. The interviewer wants to know whether you understood why you've written that particular line. Why have you chosen that algorithm? Why have you added that particular check? You'll need to have an answer for everything when you do an interview. It's extremely stressful to operate under the spotlight in this way. This is why very good programmers often falter during interviews. They're not used to having so many questions asked of them while they're thinking through their stuff. Often they know something works, but they don't know why. It's important to know why. So what's the solution? What do you do so that you can give a good interview to work at a good place, something that's aspirational for you? What are the steps that you need to follow? I think the most important thing is letting go of all preconceptions and all the stuff that you know and learn to work with the fundamentals. You need to brush up on the fundamentals of coding, algorithm and everything that's related to programming starting from zero. You also need to understand and internalize basic algorithms. Things you may just know like searching, sorting. Many of the core algorithms have very deep thought behind it. Not only do you need to understand it, but you need to internalize it. This goes for basic data structures and design. Why do you set up your project in a certain way? Why do you use these entities? Most importantly, why do you need to start from zero? Now, as you've programmed a lot and gained some experience, you'll know the solution to a lot of stuff without exactly knowing why that works. And while this is totally fine to have this in daily life, in fact, that's what makes a good programmer. Good solutions are spinal level to her. However, When you go in for a programming interview, you can't say you don't know why something works. Interviewers love to ask you why. An anecdote I can relate is once I was done interviewing a candidate for a position in the company that I worked for at that time, he then mentioned to me that he's never been asked why so many times while programming and it really made him think. In an interview, how well you articulate the answer to why, how well you can explain why you're doing something specific makes all the difference in the world. Knowing why you approach a problem a certain way, knowing the pros and cons and having a clear idea of that in your head makes all the difference. And most importantly, you need to Practice for programming interviews. It's not part of your daily life. You need to practice and practice again. Interviews are a different skill set than an everyday software engineering job, except for a few really talented people. But if you practice and practice again, you can get good at cracking interviews. So what are the things that you need to crack a programming interview? Core programming concepts at your fingertips. If you know a language well and you claim to know it well, you should be able to code in it fluently. Practice till you get it right. You should not be thinking about what construct of the language you need to use at any point in time. You need a good understanding of standard algorithms and data structures. This is very important. But even more important is You need to know why they are used in a specific case. What do they optimize? Do they improve performance? Do they increase the speed of the algorithm, the speed of calculation? Knowing that is even more important because that's when you'll be able to apply it 
to other problems supreme attention to detail during a programming interview the interviewer is thinking about whether you're performing the correct null checks whether you're thinking about the edge cases whether you're thinking about how this program can fail in production you don't have a qa tester sitting there testing your program you have to do it yourself you have to code defensively and then you need the ability to apply all of these fundamentals to any problem and if it's a very difficult problem you should at least get started freezing up in a programming interview is the worst thing that you can do but if you have a bunch of fundamentals set up correctly you will not freeze because you'll be able to use your fundamentals to start a problem you'll realize that once you get started the interviewer will often help you and give you hints to kind of nudge you along the path these are basic details that you need to crack the programming interview very simple but very hard to apply there's one important point which i've missed out and that is none of this is possible you cannot crack the programming interview without lots and lots of practice that's the most important thing lots and lots of practice so that it becomes almost spinal level or muscle memory to get started on a problem you are not intimidated by what the interviewer asks you just like you prepare for an exam you prepare for an interview it's just professionalism every line of code in this universe has a reason to exist and if it doesn't it should have a reason to exist and the converse of this is that no line should exist without a reason this is because a good programmer is making trade offs in every line of code that he writes why am i choosing this data structure why am i initializing it in this way what are the pros and cons can it be done in any different way understanding this is important because when you write code your ability to make the trade offs will be seen in real time during an interview understanding these trade offs and understanding why you've written any line of code that's there on the whiteboard on your editor or wherever even for very small and boring programs make you a better programmer and if they make you a better programmer they make you better at interviewing so when you practice understand the trade offs of what you've written don't leave little turds of variable initializations and function calls which don't mean anything interviewers judge these details as well as the bigger picture of whether you can get to your objective do you understand where this function fits in and what you're trying to build you need to get both of those right the details as well as the bigger picture and the way to get there is you start practicing with very small and basic programs don't consider those beneath you if you're already an experienced programmer it's worth your while to spend a little bit of effort working on small and basic programs as a part of your interview prep and then you move on to the larger ones and you'll find that they get a lot easier once you have your fundamentals straight one last bit of philosophizing before we go into real code when you prepare for a coding interview it helps to learn and memorize a lot of standard problems but there is something that's even more important when you practice these standard problems what's even more important is to internalize why a particular algorithm works the way it does to really understand every step in that algorithm why does it have this complexity why is this faster what are the trade offs these typically tend to be the two states of any programmer either you consider yourself a god because you've cracked something or you're buried in with doubts the secret sauce 
to being able to apply standard programming techniques anywhere is to understand why things work the way they do even with standard problems ask why as you are practicing now there is no guarantee that you would have seen the interview problem before interviewers are basically on to the fact that there are a lot of programming interviews books out there which have all standard problems explained depending on which book you've read you may have heard the problem before but that's not a guarantee what's important that you cover enough breadth of not just standard algorithms but also just real world problems you think of and try to solve them yourself if you cover breadth during practice like a whole range of problems you'll find that any problem thrown to you is similar to another even if it's just 10% of overlap that similarity will help you get started getting started is half the battle so knowing a whole bunch of standard algorithm helps you getting started on a problem which you may not have heard of before and that's why you need to ask why so what should you be able to do at the end of this course this course starts with pointers and at the end you should be an expert on working with pointers in c and even the even more mind bending pointers to pointers should also be clear to you there are tons of examples around 20 with linked lists and strings and you should be able to master all of them and know how to tackle any interview questions on these topics which are thrown at you